Folks, if you've been watching our channel for any time at all, you know I love this Summit front and rear or rear only hydraulic kit. But you also know that by watching our channel, you're gonna hear the facts and you're gonna hear about issues when I find them and when I find solutions to them. And that's what we got today. There is an issue with this Summit valve with, uh, as far as I know, every one of them. And it's an issue that affects some people and not others. But uh, yeah, we're gonna tell you about that. Let's get started. Now, the first clue I wanna tell you is that while we're going through this, you'll actually be able to see the issue occurring right before your eyes, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is, okay? First, I'm going to share with you just some basics about the Summit Kit again. If you haven't seen that in the past, if you haven't seen anything about it, it's uh, uh, mounts back here anywhere you want. We, we provide a ROPS bracket for it. Um, it's between two and four valves. This one is the four valve, and if you'll notice, I only have three sets here of couplers on the back. Well, the bottom set is routed all the way to the front. So it functions as the front third function as well. They're electrically controlled. Um, we chose that for cost reasons. We also chose it for handiness for the install and just overall, we thought it would work a lot easier. If we had a mechanical control, the levers would either have to be back here, which is uh, essentially impossible to reach from the operator station, or we would have to run a bunch of hoses to wherever we wanted to put these levers. We'd have to run two sets in, two sets out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not good. So we chose to go with electric. They are bang bang valves. For these small tractors, I haven't found that to be much of an issue, right? In fact, for one of my applications, the application here, this pull type box blade when connected to the laser system, the electric bang bang or on off valves have been perfect because these connectors fit right into our laser system. This thing connects to the power beyond. So if you've got a power beyond on your tractor, this will work for you. Summit has now extended this to support a bunch of different tractors, right? So it supports not just John Deere, not just Kubota, but they've got Coyote and I believe they may even have some other brands that, that they are supporting now with this unit. Even if they don't have specific support for your tractor, that just means they don't have the right hose links maybe, or maybe they don't have the right couplers to connect to the Power Beyond. Easy things for you to resolve, just get the universal kit. Now, I get a lot of questions about um, which part numbers to get. There's two different part numbers there's a lot of different part numbers, but two different prefixes that are, that are relevant. One is EVK. I don't know what EVK stands for, but it is the rear only kit. Okay. The other one is the FRK or sometimes just FR in the prefix. For example, this is the FR4 JD1. And what they mean is it's a front rear kit. That's the FR portion. Four means the total number of valves. JD means John Deere, and one means the first instance of the John Deere kit that they designed. FR4 JD1. The EVK kit is similar, but it, part numbers are a little bit different. Um, we intend to have some website updates to assist you even a little bit more, but we have sort of a wizard now at summit-hydraulics.com slash TTWT, and you can walk through that wizard, make your selections front only, front and rear, rear only, and it will guide you to most of these kits and, and really try to help you with that selection. Have you seen the issue yet? If you haven't, rewind the video back to the beginning, and I think you'll see it. We'll talk about that now. I've intentionally not moved the camera yet because I want you to notice just how much the box plate has dropped even during this discussion, right? We've, it's, it's gone down several inches during this brief discussion. And I only shot this once. It's not like I had multiple shoots here. That's just how fast it's gone down. Now we call that leak down. And you might say, well, I don't, I don't see any oil leakage. Yeah, I'll explain. That's right. The leakage is not external. It's not something we're going to see on the outside, the leakage is occurring inside these electric valves right here. So there's 
oil pressure on one side of this because the box blade has gravity pulling down on it. It's putting pressure on the downside of this cylinder and that pressure is feeding back through here and there should be suitable seals in here, suitable manufacturing, tight tolerance manufacturing to prevent that leakage across to the other side. But what's happening is, is this oil is slowly leaking back into the tractor's system. So it's allowing it to go down very slowly. There's a couple of ways to solve this problem. Like most problems, sometimes the best technical solution is not the best solution for the market. And, and that's kind of where we've been. I've been discussing this with Summit for a long time. And these valves right here are fairly inexpensive valves, right? So they might not have as tight of tolerances on their internals as some of the more expensive valves. But that's what's made this unit available to most of us, right? I mean, if we had to double the price or even more of this whole kit, there would be a lot of you left out. L leave a comment if, if, if you would be in that situation. When you were thinking $1,000 for this kit, versus $2,000 for the exact same kit, it would make you question whether you could still afford it. And I, I, I get that. And so that's really what's going on here. You can buy these valves, and Summit can buy these valves, that are better quality, right? But they're much more expensive. So they've kind of been stuck in that. They've said, look, we, we want to get the product out to as many people as we can that can afford it, right? And for most items, it's not a big deal if it leaks down a little bit and you have to uh, raise your, your implement again. Or uh, on my first top link, for example, I had to raise it um, multiple times with a box blade on the back. This is why we've started recommending the top link from agristoreusa.com that has a check valve right here built in, okay? So a check valve. Yeah, that's where we're headed. A check valve prevents this leak down. And the way these check valves are made, they're called dual piloted check valves. You have to apply pressure on the pilot side to allow flow in one of the two directions on, on the other side. I'll show you what we're gonna install here. This is a dual piloted check valve that's specifically meant to go in between this valve and the aluminum manifold here. Again, it's a dual piloted valve, so it's actually two separate check valves. You understand the basic check valve is simply something that will prevent backflow. You see these in a lot of plumbing scenarios. Uh, it, it, it allows flow only in one direction. If the fluid tries to come back the other direction, it, it gets stopped. Well, with the piloted check valve, it stops the fluid in that direction until there's pressure applied to the pilot. And when pressure gets applied to the pilot, it, it opens that reverse flow. So this is a dual piloted check valve, and you might even say a dual piloted dual check valve, right? Because it's got a separate check valve with a separate pilot for each direction. So it's gonna prevent either direction from backflow until one hits the, the control switch and says, hey, I really want to move it. And it says, oh, gee, you're applying pressure. That means I'm going to allow the, the backflow at that point. So the way Summit, at least in the short term, has decided to deal with this issue is to make these dual piloted check valves available. I'll put a link in the description, put the part number right here. Um, you can buy however many of these you want. You don't have to buy the same number that you have your, your block. So you might have only one valve that you really care that much about, that it's worth the extra money to buy the check valve. And the rest of them, you might say, I don't really care if they leak down, um, I'd, I'd rather save the money. This puts the, the decision in your hands, which I think is a, a very good thing. Now, it's entirely possible that Summit will transition away from these less expensive valves. They, they, they are looking, as far as I know, they're looking actively trying to find an inexpensive valve that does not have this internal leak down issue. If they find that, I'm gonna put that in a pinned comment. And by the way, on almost every video we have, if there's a correction, if there's an update, we're gonna put it in the pinned comment and in the description from now on. Actually, we've done that for a while because we can't go back and re-edit these videos. Uh, once they're out, they're out. So if they've chosen to upgrade this valve and make 
the check valve is no longer necessary, I'll let you know in the pinned comment. And it should also say so on the site. Along those lines, I think we're going to see a lot more configuration going forward. I don't know about a lot more, at least some more configuration options going forward. For example, Summit might allow you to choose the economy valve or the, you know, the more expensive valve so that you don't have to have the extra space of the check valve. I don't know whether they'll choose that approach or not, but they also might allow some other choices, maybe some hose length choices or I, I don't really know, but uh, the point is the enhancement of these kits is not done, right? There's going to be more enhancement, more flexibility in the future. These have been successful, and I'm hearing from a lot of viewers that they are solving the issue, and they're solving it cost-effectively. So that's why I'm a little hesitant just to, to blast Summit for using a less expensive valve is because I, I just know that this kit would not be affordable. I, in fact, I would have had a hard time bragging about it on our channel if it would have been a $2,500 valve just out of the gate, right? I just, uh, you know, that, that's, that's asking a lot. At $1,000, I think it's gone up a little bit now, but a, a, a $1,000 to $1,200, I don't exactly know the price. Make sure you use code TTWT, you get a 5% discount. But at those prices, it's at least more palatable, and you get so much function. You get the rear valves and the front valves. A lot of talk. Where am I going to put this? Well, I'm going to put one of them on the front third function because I want the clamp to stay clamped on the grapple. I don't like when it... It, it loses pressure and releases. So I'm definitely gonna put one there. And I'm definitely gonna put one on this main valve here at the top where my box blade so we can see if it doesn't go down. And then I may go from there. I, I don't have enough of these to cover all of the valves on all of my systems. So I may, I may use them sparingly so that I have some upgraded and some not. It, same purpose as you, right? Save a little dollars, save a little bit of money here and there and I can buy more cheeseburgers. I think I'll do this top one. It's the easiest for you to see. No use wasting your time showing you one that's difficult to see. I did bring a little bit more light in here. I didn't unhook my attachment, but I did let the pressure off, so there should be no pressure there. Now, when I originally did these, I showed you that I had difficulty keeping these from leaking. Well, that turned out to be my own fault. I had mounted these upside down. At the time, I had, well, I had some instructions, but I ignored them, let's be honest. Whoop, there's, there's some more air goes through. In just a second here, I'll show you the proper way to install these so that it's much easier for you and you won't have the leakage issues that I had. There is an extra hole here, an extra hole right there, and that's the side that the P goes on. There's a P right here. When we're replacing these, these little screws won't be long enough anymore, okay? With your dual piloted check valve kit, you should have got longer screws. If you didn't get four longer screws, you will need them. So you might as well get on the horn with Summit and get that resolved. But hopefully you, you did get them. Notice I didn't have much oil leak there at all. Just a few drops. Now this also has a hole. So it will match up against that other hole right there. We'll follow the same rule. Put the P, meaning port, here. Can't tell if that started or yet or not. So clearly the negative of this approach is that it makes the valve one inch taller. And yeah, the valve was already big, right? The whole setup was already tall. So this is, this is not optimal in that sense. So I'm still hoping that Summit will come out with a, you know, the more expensive valve that does not leak down at some time in the future. But until then, this is, this is our only choice through Summit. It's entirely possible you could buy third-party valves, but I don't have a good one to recommend. That's all there is to it. We really don't have to tighten these very tight. Never mind what I said in the first video where I was having serious leakage issues. But again, that was my fault. I'm ready to test.
I'll choose some rough measurement here that's just visible to the camera. Yeah, this is not scientific. 41 and 3 quarters or 41 and 7 eighths to the top of that weight. And then I'll finish the video just with some discussions about this. You don't need a check valve on any valve that you're going to hook to the top link, right? As long as you get the top link from agristoreusa.com and use code TTWT there. You will need it if you're using a standard cylinder. You can put the check valve on the cylinder, right? Just like the top link does. Um, it would have to be a different check valve than, than this one, a different dual piloted valve than this one. But the same concept applies. You don't have to have the dual piloted check valve in the valve body here. It can be closer to the cylinder. Of course, the advantages of having it on the valve body is that you won't have to buy two of them for two different attachments. I need to find a way to filibuster here, you know, because I need to kind of watch this for about the next half an hour to see if it's going to go down. I typically don't run my box blade with the three-point hitch on at all. I take the entire three-point hitch off, not just the eye match. I just find it, it gets in the way of all these hoses. I left it on today because I have the power top link and I did want to show you how that's attached. Um, I can say that the, the check valve here can be turned on its side. The entire top link cylinder can be turned over such that the hoses are on the bottom. There's a, a lot of ways to connect this, but I don't know of any way yet that is perfect, right? It's, it's a little bit difficult. These hoses are a bit stiff. I'm working with AgriStore USA on that to see if we can get some less stiff hoses. Um, and maybe get a little bit of more flexibility in, in the hose connections. This is always going to be difficult with a power top link or with a power side link. That's right, I mentioned it. Talk more about that in a second. But this is always going to be difficult because the entire linkage has to go up and down, right? And so there's several different positions for this. And it's even worse because this valve is, is right here in that same area where the up and down has to occur. So this is going to be a challenge. Side link. I'm still working on it. The current estimate is September for production. Can you wait that long? I guess we could try to make our own and, and I could do that as a welding project for you in the interim if you were really excited. If you're interested in, in seeing us try to make our own right here in our shop, you know I'm not an expert welder. I, I'm happy to do that. Um, if you think you just want to wait and see the production version, let me know that as well. Let's do a measurement again. I can measure this, but I bet you can tell me already whether this has gone down or not, just simply by rewinding the video and watching this uh, fast forward. Hey, it's a miracle. It's actually gone up like four inches. No. No, it's, uh, it's stayed right where it was. So the check valve is working, at least in the short term. That's gonna be much, much easier for my box blade work because one thing that uh, Neil from Dig Drive DIY does is he uses this pull type box blade, sets it at a specified height, and just keeps running with it. Well, I could never do that because my box blade just kept going down, kept going down. Now that it's at the specified height, that should really work. Another thing I wanna talk about is these weights. I put them on here again today so that it would exaggerate the down pressure and exaggerate how fast the leak down went. So far, I have not found them to be necessary or even helpful on any of the projects I've worked on. The blade is heavy enough on its own, and I'm finding that by adding the weights, I, I put too much down pressure on it such that it, it fills up too quickly. I find I have a hard time leveling with it. And with the little tractor especially, I just can't pull it. The same was with the 2 Series. I did not try the 5-footer on the 3R, but uh, no need. I mean, even in the hard uh, soil that we were working in last fall on the hump, I just I gave up on the weight. So I'm not sure that's actually a necessary addition, but it was kind of fun to do the welding. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. A quarrelsome wife is like the dripping of a leaky roof in a rainstorm. Restraining her is like restraining the wind or grasping oil with the hand. Did you guys notice I was even more talkative than usual today? 
Christy's been gone for almost an entire week. I've had no one to talk to. No one to tell me to be quiet. <sighs> yeah.